Hey everybody, I'm Adam and this is Think Club. Hey everybody, I just wanted to do a quick video to point this out. Someone had sent me this clip on Twitter and PSA Sitch and I had done a live stream with Ben Burgess of Zero Books on the topic of Marxism. I had a video that was quite popular on my Think Club channel about Marxism and we had what I thought was a good discussion. Now, the thing that bothers me about this is these two guys, Guys, the, these two guys are on the left, and the left constantly claims about how punching down is a terrible thing to do, and these guys claim to be the voice of the little guy, the voice of, of the dispossessed, the people who don't have a voice. And here we are, smaller YouTubers. I have, on my personal channel, I have 13,000 subs. On my largest channel, which was demonetized, I think I have 68,000 subs. PSA Sitch has 69,000 subs on his channel, and these guys have close to half a million subs. And here they are saying obnoxious things about us, totally mischaracterizing our positions to their large audiences. Wait, what the hell, guys? I thought punching down was something that the left was staunchly against. Now, I'm going to play the clip for you because it's so bleeding obnoxious and so bleeding in the leftist bubble. It's quite hilarious. But uh, Ben Burgess has really good videos for zero books where he actually more so than us he's he's a logic professor so he's actually using so that would be called the fallacious reasoning of appeal to authority, okay? I'm not saying that logic can't help you in this situation, but where I come from, evidence is what reigns supreme, okay? Logic is useful once you gather your evidence. We asked Ben Burgess to bring us some evidence. We have a counterclaim to him. My basic claim is, and I don't want to speak for PSA Sitch here, but my basic claim on the Marxism thing is without the incentive for outsize wealth and status, economies will lose a devastating amount of innovation, okay? That is the claim that I am making. I would like them to present some evidence to counter this claim. They constantly present the evidence that not all people are driven by money. Some people are driven by just the out of the good of their heart. They want to give everything that they create to the society around them. Okay, I am with you there. I think there's plenty of evidence that some people aren't driven by money. I think there's more evidence that people are generally driven by money and self-interest. And when you set up an economy this way, you are capitalizing on both the people that are driven by self-interest and the people that are driven by altruistic, wanting to better society motivation, okay? In your system, you are only capitalizing on the population that is going to innovate for altruistic reasons. And we could do a study. We could figure out how many people are driven by self-interest and how many people are driven by altruism. We could do that study and we could figure out how much of the economy you are going to lose by setting up your system. This is my claim. This is a claim that I'm making. This is not an illogical claim. So let me continue here with the, the ad hominem attacks and the total mischaracterizing of our position here. By these people with nearly half a million subs. So let me continue the punching down here. The punching the little guy. Punching the little YouTuber. Oh, right. excuse he, us. Yeah, very much so. He had a great debate with a with with some some Jordan Peterson cultist, and what was great was they were debating. Oh yeah, yeah, J Jordan Peterson cultist is what we are. Yeah, that's that's great. That's good. That's great. Why don't you back that claim up, buddy? Why don't you back that claim up? The conversation we had with Ben Burgess was over the lobster thing. Ben Burgess acknowledged our argument. Your side does not understand the argument that Peterson is making with the lobsters. Ignorance of the argument does not allow you to claim victory. The viability of worker cooperatives, because these guys always are like, oh, uh, logically, uh, the best person needs to make the decision for a business to succeed. <laughs> I think that's pretty basic. And it's his argument that you want a person making decisions with an 85 IQ versus a person with 165 IQ. Is that the argument that you are making there? I watched this video recently. It's a tragic situation. The army actually drafted people with an IQ of 
of 85. Uh, they were called McNamara's morons. Robert McNamara, during the Vietnam War, decided that they were having trouble getting smart people into the military because they didn't want to go over to Vietnam and be killed, okay? So he decided he was going to have people with an 85 IQ be drafted into the military. These people were so dumb. In the book about this situation, one of the guys was talking about how he was training one of these guys, and they had to teach him how to lob hand grenades in the air to hit the enemy. So you have to lob a hand grenade up into the air. And these guys were too stupid to realize that you had to arc the hand grenade. They kept on throwing them like a baseball and not being able to hit the target, which was several hundred feet away. That's how dumb these people were. And you are seem to be making the claim that these people are completely competent to make business decisions for your restaurant. What is your claim here? Ben, in addition to sort of explaining why that's a logical fallacy, which isn't as interesting to me, to be honest, he also was like, well, you know, we can talk about things like Madragon and the workers' cooperatives in Cleveland and stuff. And they're just like, oh, no, you were getting two in the weeds. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that is not what happened, okay? I did not say that we were getting two in the weeds. I asked him for evidence of how many workers co-ops exist in the real world compared to how many hierarchical business structures. And we've done later research on this stuff, and it comes to we come to find out that Mogliani or Modriani or whatever the workers co-op it is, yes, it's huge, but it is hierarchically structured, guys. There are people in the organization that make more money. There's a, a limit to the amount of differential between the lowest paid worker and the highest paid worker. The highest paid worker can only... I got it. This screen cap is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could... Uh Okay, these guys, these guys are so, listen, straw manning a guy's argument, a smaller YouTuber's argument, it, and punching down from your huge channel of 430,000 subscribers is not exactly a good look, guys. Seriously, if you want to debate somebody's ideas, why don't you actually steel man their argument? We invited Ben Burgess on. We were completely amicable towards him. We had a good exchange. We still have open lines of communication. This completely goes against your mythical idea that you actually stand for the little guy. This is ridiculous. So just to get back to the, the statistics, cooperative businesses are in competition with normal hierarchical capital capital-based businesses in the economy right now, in the environment. We asked him, you know, since they are competing in the marketplace, what share do these cooperatives have? And he's talking like these people have a huge share. Ben Burgess said that it was less than 0.01%. That's a tiny amount. If these are so competitive, if they're so great, then why aren't they taking over the capitalist framework? Why aren't they taking over the other business models, the other hierarchical business models? Dude, just present your evidence. Don't laugh at a straw man of our argument. It makes you look like a dork. We got to get back to first principles here. Exactly. <laughs> Ideas. See, and I don't, this whole idea that we have to get back to first principles, I don't recall me ever saying anything about first principles or Sitch saying anything about first principles. We have a very logical claim on the table, okay? Our claim is very simple. People respond to incentives. That's how economies work. If people watch, you know, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, they think, wow, I want to be on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. I want all that status and wealth. I want to be that person. And they start thinking, how do I get there? How do I become that person? I know I'll think up a business. I'll innovate something. This is how the innovative spark happens. Now, if people sit in their living rooms and they look out at bread lines, <laughs> they think, how am I going to get to the front of that bread line? They don't think, how am I going to come up with the next iPhone? It's very simple simple. Our, our argument is very logical, very logical, very reasonable. Please, if you are going to counter our argument, counter our argument. Don't counter a straw man of our argument. It's not I really think ideas. anybody who says the words first principles, I think generally is yeah. immediately suspect. No. Okay. See, immediately he goes on. Anybody that says the word first principles is suspect. Well, good. Cause we never said the word first principles. You jack off.
Oh, yeah. that just that's basically yeah. I mean, like what I said. It's just last training night, wheels. Yeah, it's like what I said last night too. It also starts to become like when you argue with a creationist, and then you say like the fossil. Oh, so so now he's comparing us to creationists. Okay, so I'm an atheist. Blow hard. Okay, I like seriously. My argument is based on logic, reason, and evidence. When your argument is based on your feelings about how people should be treated in society you're you're basing your argument on your gut intuition and you're not basing your argument on evidence guess who is the creationist in this analogy it's not me you are the creationist fossil record and they're like well the satan put that there so right. i don't accept That's that see it's it's even more ironic that he brings up the creationist thing because the whole lobster argument is based on evolution okay <laughs> like seriously the argument that i presented to ben was if hierarchies are a persistent pressure in the environment evolutionarily don't you think we would be psychologically adapted to that pressure don't you think that would be logical evolutionarily based right evidently you'd have to go to some kind of creationist argument to get around that, that that's exactly my point you might as well say like when you say when you hear uh, first principles what you might as well hear is someone See, saying they're going on about this first principles that none of us ever said well the torah says something exactly. very different so <laughs> uh, yeah all these all these leftists you know i understand that it's very safe in your bubble there i understand that it's very safe there safe in your place where there's no counter voices challenging your assumptions about the world but this is not going to produce good arguments okay this is just you guys patting each other on the back it's a a social game you're playing it's not a search for truth uh, anyways, I, I don't, don't know how think we get uh, Yahweh would agree with you. Appreciate the call. I want to thank Ray for sharing that with me on Twitter, and I would love your feedback in the comments below on these guys. I don't watch their stuff. I tend to stay away from super leftist content because it's just it's so frustrating. It's like these guys have a worldview that is not based in evidence. It's not based in facts. It's based in their feelings. And I, you know, I I'm a logic guy. I'm an evidence guy. So please. Please present an argument, counter our argument. I encourage you to do it. If our reasoning is flawed, I want to know it. But this isn't countering our argument. This is just punching on a couple of little guys. This is just beating up a couple of little YouTubers for fun. And it's frankly quite disgusting. Well, first of all, if you don't have a purpose, then, sir, it isn't that your life becomes neutral in a, in a meaningless sense. It's that your life becomes characterized by unbearable suffering. Because the baseline condition of life is something like unbearable suffering.